I'm gonna melt that Sharpie through the playing card and then move it through the fibers in slow motion and it looks like this. Just like that, you can see the card is still signed, it's got their names still on it, there are no slits, no gaps. So for this we need a card selected at random and signed, so let's take one out, let's go for this. And it needs to be signed by the spectator, so to do that we need to borrow a Sharpie. So with the borrowed Sharpie they can put anything they like on their card to make it unique. We'll cap the lid and as we wait for the ink to dry, I'll tell you what's going to happen next. I'm going to melt that Sharpie through the playing card and then move it through the fibers in slow motion and it looks like this. Just like that, you can see the card is still signed, it's got their names still on it, there are no slits, no gaps, no holes. The Sharpie was borrowed anyway, so right now they can go ahead and keep their signed card and their Sharpie. In today's episode, you're gonna be building the most intense and extreme card gimmick I've ever created. Word of warning, this is not for the faint of heart. Welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. In this week's episode, like I said, you're gonna be making a pretty hardcore gimmick. Now, before we get into it, I wanna say there's a competition to win the very gimmick that I build in today's Tutorial Tuesday. However, I don't really want to give this away, so please feel free to not enter the contest. All you need to do is hit the subscribe button and then get five of your friends to subscribe to my channel too, and I'll be picking a winner at random next week. All you need to do is tag me in social media or send me a message to prove that you've done it, and I'll pick a winner at random for next week's Tutorial Tuesday. Let's dive in to this week's episode. First, a brief history lesson. Okay, so for any amateur magicians out there watching this video, it's always important to do your history, crediting, and research, and it just pays respect to the people that came before you and explored these ideas. I founded this idea off an incredible effect by Tenyo. As you guys know, I'm a massive Tenyo fan. The effect is called Wandering Hall, and you'll see a video of it being performed on screen by the presenting Tenyo channel on YouTube, and if you haven't seen them, go and check them out. They're amazing. Uh, Hideo Kato's Wandering Hall, released by Tenyo in 1976, called the T96 as the product code. Um, and it's an amazing version of this where you take a plastic board, you put a pen through a hole, move the pen and remove it from the hole. It's an incredible piece of magic. Uh, and it's led to so many different versions being created and released by other people over the years. And more so that the, the versions that have been released are more organic and uh, basically using more common objects like playing cards and sharpies. Now, I've always loved this effect. I've got a million different versions of it, the card through Sharpie that it moves. But this is the version that I love the most and I'll tell you why. As with the original version, both the card and the pen are gimmick. And that's not really giving anything away because we all kind of know how that works. And there's a massive issue with that. It means because both the, the, the pen and the, and, and the board are gimmicked, it means that when you finish the performance in the real world, you're left with two dirty objects that need to be switched. And I figured that if you're gonna perform this in the real world, and when you perform this in the real world, you're gonna to have to hand them out to be examined because this is all about them being examined because that's the magic that they, this shouldn't be possible. So I figured that if you're gonna gimmick one, if both the objects, why not just gimmick one, but gimmick it more extreme so that the other object can be handed out whilst you need that brief moment of misdirection to do the secret move. So I figured either the card or the Sharpie should be gimmicked, not both. So I chose to gimmick the card because the card is easier to gimmick. And also because the Sharpie is more likely to be on someone. Someone is likely to have a Sharpie. And it's more of a common object. So they'll be more familiar with it. They'll be happier to take it off you and examine it quicker. So I figured it doesn't make sense to gimmick them both. And that's why I chose to gimmick the card because it's gonna be gimmicked anyway just leave the Sharpie ungimmicked and now you're in this golden area where you do this super powerful visual effect. It looks just as good as the original Wandering Hole, but one of the objects can be borrowed and handed back and it gives you the perfect motivation to do the secret move. So that's the history and credits and my thinking behind this. Now warm them fingers up, crack those knuckles and get ready to start building the gimmick and it is pretty intense, I will warn you in advance. So I'm gonna use two double backers to make this gimmick. The first thing I'm going to do is cut out a sort of silhouette shape of a Sharpie. All right, so if I start about here, I'm going to cut it to this line on the card. And now you want to get about the width of the Sharpie. Uh, I'd say it's about there. And I'm going to cut then 
a hopefully a straight line at about that width down. So I'm just doing this by eye, but if I were you, I'd measure it and do it much more carefully than me. And as always, be careful when you're using these blades. And now you'll see the end of a Sharpie is sort of curved. So I'm gonna cut that curve shape out. Uh, freehand as best as I can into this. So it's sort of like, and if this is wrong, I can just readjust like that. And then So now that you've got your silhouette of a Sharpie cut out, you're gonna take it the other double backer and for the moment you're just gonna tape them together trying to get them to line up as perfectly as possible. So you can see they line up pretty well there. I'm gonna tape these together and make eight holes on either side of the Sharpie. Okay, so these are two taped together so they line up perfectly. Now I'm going to go ahead and make eight holes this side evenly spaced apart and eight holes this side evenly spaced apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the same this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that's eight holes on either side of the Sharpie cutout. Now what we're going to do is remove the tape and cut away the excess parts of the card. Okay, so just so you can see, I've left a bit of tape on and I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna cut out this area of card here. So just so you can see, it'll, I'm gonna cut out this strip. Okay, so you can see we've cut out this piece of card and that's going to be going here. Now comes the sort of crazy part. We're going to cut this card into four pieces and then we're going to cut those pieces eventually into eight, but it looks like this. Wherever the two holes are, so, so you can see there's a hole here and a hole here and then the same on this side. I'm going to cut between those two holes. Okay, so it'll, it'll, it'll have, each section of card will have four holes in it. So pay close attention to where you cut in. And I'm going to cut one, there's two, one, two, one, two. So I'm going to cut Two, again, one, two, one, two. That, and then the last two are there. Now, I'm going to use elastic thread and thread each piece on each side. <laughs> this is such a crazy gimmick. For example, this piece will be threaded on both sides, here and here, okay? So this is gonna take you quite a while to do. So let's just start doing it. So that's one side done. Now we have to do this side and do the rest for every other piece of card. Okay, so now we do this next piece, which is gonna go right here. I can't believe we've actually got this far. Now the last thing to do <laughs> is to cut a line straight down the middle of these to create four barn doors. And you do that 
like this. This is so nerve wracking. Okay, now you have your gimmick that should hopefully, I think it's a bit too tight. So if it's too tight, you want to cut the edges off these pieces here or here to allow it to, and you can tell which sides are too tight because they won't move. So as you can see, the thread holes in this part of the gimmick are right in the center but there's too much card this side and that's stopping it from opening like a door. So you just need to cut the ends off because they're invisible anyway, but you don't want to cut off too much because they won't give enough tension in the card. It's kind of a fine line to balance. So you just want to start off with little pieces and test it out and then see how much you can get away with cutting off. All right, so that's one bit like that little piece. Now these sort of barn doors should open a little bit easier. So you can go through like that. Boom. One more time. Through. And up. Through. And up. <laughs> so this is a close up view of the gimmick and considering how intricate it is, it's kind of hard to show the, the gimmick itself. So I'll Try and shine it in the light, which is the most exposed way of showing it. And you can see there's the cutout of the Sharpie here. And these are the, the barn doors that are going to open for the Sharpie to pass through. So from the, from the exposed back side, the Sharpie goes in like that. And, and it's going to open these doors as it moves through. So let me show you again. It'll go in. And these will move out the way as it travels through. So you can see these are like two barn doors on each section. So these two will open, these two will open, these two and these two. And considering how intricate and detailed it is, it's uh, quite hard to actually see even close up with a DSLR camera. So in performance, you go in this and through. So now that you have your gimmick, this is how it's going to work. You can see the orientation of the gimmick like this. I'm going to place it face down on top so you can see it right here. And you don't need a Sharpie because you can borrow it. Either way, what I do is have a card selected, in this case, any card. You can see this one's pre-signed. Borrow the Sharpie if you want to, and then sign the card. Cap the Sharpie and turn the cards over as a double. So you'll get a break beneath the two cards here. Turn them over as a double, and now push off your gimmick. So I've got the signed card secretly here, and this is now the gimmick. Now I'm gonna get a break under this card, and this is gonna help us later. And all you're gonna do is take the Sharpie, and you're gonna push it through the first part of the gimmick like that. And you're gonna angle it backwards like this, and this is gonna allow these doors to open up, all right? So you're gonna, from an exposed view, place the Sharpie through at an angle, like that, okay? You're gonna drag it back, like this, and it's gonna cause these little barn doors to move out the way and open and close. And the important thing here is that you don't just leave a big hole showing like that. You wanna be, a, if you're at an angle, it'll close that gap up, see? So when you're like this, it'll keep that gap closed. And then all you can do is remove it, and it looks like it's melted through. Now you can practice trying to do this. You can practice melting it through one side and now tilting it forward and melting it back through, being careful not to kick the gimmick out the side. So it's all about the tilt at the angle. So you can tilt it and that will cause the doors to hopefully move out of the way as you come up like this. Now, all you need to do is place this card on top of the deck like that, where you have the break already. Turn this card over and hand out everything to be examined. All right, drum roll please. Brrr, the winner of last week's tutorial Tuesday that wins five pre-linked rubber bands made by yours truly is 
Jay Waters, the amazing JDub52. He actually went and got like 12 people to subscribe to the channel and he subscribed to the channel himself and shared the video on social media. So thank you to Jay Waters. All you need to do is follow in Jay's footsteps, do what he did and I'll pick a winner at random to win this gimmick that I, I genuinely don't want to give away because that means I have to make another one again for myself. But you'll win this gimmick sent to you wherever you are in the world. So if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button if you're feeling super generous, drop me a like, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're the first person to see these videos when they go live. I'll be back in two days with another episode of Fooler where I perform some live magic on my wife Kaylee. She reviews it and if you're lucky I reveal how it works. So thank you so much. Enjoy this video, get those fingers moving, and get ready to make some pretty hardcore gimmicks.